not like none of these people have any training in constitutional law. Keep this in mind. This is all I'm going to say. In the last maybe two election cycles, it's getting more and more trendy for young people to put on a suit, practice, you know, with the Chamber of Commerce, going around glad handing people and BSing them, and then they run for office and they're winning. But when you when you look like I did when I went to District 88 in the state house, I had a, uh, a friend that asked me to do a favor. You call up and ask for the, for the assistant and you have an issue. And you say, I realize Senate uh, House Representative so-and-so is on a, the Banking and Finance Subcommittee and I have a Banking and Finance Grievance. They won't contact you. When you look up what their sponsored bills are or what their co-sponsor or endorsed bills are, it's all special interests. It's identity politics. Let me tell you something. West Palm Beach would be a whole dump if it weren't for a few people there who pissed away a lot of money buying penthouses trying to be ritzy. There would be Palm Beach Island, which is old money, real rich people, and the rest of West Palm Beach would just be a bunch of broke people, and it doesn't matter what skin tone they are. That's North Lake, that's Riviera Beach. People are running for office and they're like, listen, I look like you, which is disrespect, okay? Well, but wait. My skin tone matches yours. So you should vote for me because the world's not fair, but I'm going to make it fair. Well, do you know anything about the economics or the ecosystem or the job market or anything to do with this place? No, but I'm going to learn it. Do you have any training in this? Do you know anything about groups of people and behavior? How can we put together different laws? You, this is what would really happen. This happened to me when I was in Broward. You find out that the people running for mayor and county commission, they, they're trying to get government contracts for their businesses or their brother-in-law's business, or, oh, they used to be a lawyer, but now they're a lobbyist, but they don't really explain that. What, usually when people run for office, they go in front of people who look like them and they stereotype that group and they say, hey, look, I'm white and I have dark hair and blue eyes and all the white people should just vote for me. Like all of a sudden we're mysteriously friends. It's a con job and it's a lie. Most of the time, especially if you see a public civil servant, like a school teacher or a social worker, they work at a company that gets state money or county money for some kind of social assistance program or public program, or they run a rehab center and they're trying to make, they're trying to get elected into office so they can have budget control or at least an input in drafting legislation <coughs> to renew contracts. Everything is economic. It's not always what you see. So if I run for office and I say, attention all white people, let me tell you how abused I've been. Let me tell you how hard and unjust it is to be a white guy. Like all white people in a group and we all know each other and you're just some, somehow supposed to deduce that in voting for me, you're gonna change the world. And if you don't, you're an evil person. It's a crock. It's identity politics. It's like me running for office. It's like when I get into a political debate with someone and they start telling me, some answer to a question. They don't like this policy. Um, and I start saying, okay, economically, how does this benefit or serve or, or hurt you and your family? They don't even know. When they start to lose, and everyone starts to lose when we talk economics with me. Because I'm nonpartisan. I don't care how you vote. I just care about economic opportunity and economic betterment for people, especially the ones who need it. As soon as you attack someone, they go, oh my God, oh my God, stop everything. You don't like me because of my sexual persuasion or my skin tone. You don't like me and my group. They group themselves into a group when it's convenient. I attack you and I say to you, you don't know anything about the economics of West Palm Beach. There's a lot of poverty and there's not a lot of employers who pay a good wage and there's a big gig economy. And unless you're a really rich real estate developer and you get a permit to build some big building, with movie theaters and bars, you are not gonna make a bunch of money here. The person will, instead of arguing on politics, will go, oh my God, are you attacking me? You don't like me because I'm black. Or you don't like me because I'm not white. That's a better way of putting it. I am whatever I am, but I'm not gonna be in your group. I'm gonna put myself in another group so that two groups can argue. I'm not part of a group. I despise humans' innate desire to be in two groups. I'm not in a group, I'm just Corey. If you wanna argue with me, then you argue with me. If you start to win, I don't say, oh my God, attention. You're, 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 are you attacking white people with long hair and blue eyes and big sunglasses? That's what this country has become. You get into a political 
economic resource scarcity debate over whose budget's going where. Where's the vig coming from? Where's the money? And people go, oh my God, are you racist? Are you, you don't like me because I'm different skin tone than you? They put themselves into a group because they can't defend themselves on an economic platform because it's all a con job. I wish to be in office because the world is unjust and I think that there's a group of people who hurt this guy or this person or this business and you have to vote for me. And if you don't, you're somehow a bad person and you're not honest with yourself and you're a disgrace. It's all baiting. You're baiting people by gender or you're saying, I'm a nurse and yeah, uh, that's funny. Your husband owns a home health care facility. You bid government contracts, you get state Medicare contracts and VA contracts, and you make a lot of money doing this, so you run for office to be good in the community and make sure you get more contracts. Because 501c3s, nonprofits, are profitable for the people on salary. They're not free social programs. They have to get money from the government. Everyone in local politics does that. When someone's running for office, you have to ask them, what economic advantage is this for you? Do you know anything about the district's economy as a whole, or you have some special interest? 